the Gemini 2.5 series of models from Google is now generally available. Not only that, they have introduced Gemini 2.5 flash light, their most cost efficient and fastest 2.5 model to date. And they actually released a technical report. So I'm going to give you all of the most interesting bits from that technical report, how they built the model, how they chose the data, what innovations they made in pre and post training. It is fascinating. Let's get into it. So first, let's go over the announcement blog post. We're expanding our Gemini 2.5 family of models. 2.5 Flash and Pro are now generally available. What does that actually mean? Well, generally available means it is no longer in the test phase. It is available to everybody, meant to be used in production. And Google will support it for the foreseeable future. And can we pause for a second to think about what the perception of Google was just a year ago, even less than a year ago. Everybody was saying that Google was falling behind, if not had already lost the AI race. And now just a year later, they have some of the most compelling models on the market, not only in terms of quality in which Gemini 2.5 Pro is my personal favorite coding model to work with, but also in terms of speed, efficiency and cost. And as mentioned, they also released Gemini 2.5 Flash Lite. It excels at high volume latency sensitive tasks like translation and classification with lower latency than 2.0 Flash Lite and 2.0 Flash on a broad sample of prompts. It also has the ability to turn thinking on at different budgets, connecting tools like Google search and code execution, multimodal input, and a 1 million token context length. That is right. Every model as part of the Gemini family supports a 1 million token context length. That is insane. Industry leading. Here are some of the benchmarks and prices. So input price, 10 cents, output price, 40 cents. That is for the new flash light as of today. Now, Gemini 2.5 Pro on the other end, $1.25 per million input and $10 per million output. Now, as you can see, it doesn't compare on humanity's last exam, which is reasoning and knowledge. That's 5% as compared to 21%. But if you get into things like factuality, visual reasoning, and multilingual performance, it is pretty much on par with Gemini 2.5 Pro. So it's really choose the right model for the right task. All right, so that's all well and good, but let's take a look at their technical report because they actually released a decent amount of information for being a closed source model. So let's take a look at some of the decisions they made and how they got these models to perform so well. So here it is. It came out today as of recording this video, Gemini 2.5 pushing the frontier with advanced reasoning, multimodality, long context, and next generation agentic capabilities. Let me give you the gist of what they were thinking going into the Gemini 2.x series of models or family of models. The Gemini 2.x series are all built to be natively multimodal, supporting long context input of greater than 1 million tokens and have native tool use support. This all speaks to being extremely beneficial for developers. That's seemingly who they're targeting with these characteristics. It supports text, audio, images, video, and even entire code base repositories. These extensive capabilities can also be combined to build complex agentic systems as happened in the case of Gemini plays Pokemon. More on that later. Now let's look at this graph, which shows the differences in each of the models as part of the Gemini family. Now at the very top, we have Gemini 2.5 Flash and 2.5 Pro. They all support text, image, video, and audio. They all have a million token context window, but Gemini 2.0 Flash supports image output and 2.5 Flash and 2.5 Pro both support audio output. Now, for the output length, all of them are 8K until we reach 2.5 Flash and Pro at 64K. And Gemini 2.0 Flash has thinking, but 2.5 Flash and 2.5 Pro have a controllable thinking budget. And the cutoff for their knowledge of the two 2.5 models right here is January 2025. So I think we kind of already knew this, but the Gemini 2.5 models are sparse mixture of experts. And if you're not familiar with what that means, that just means these are massive models, but only parts of the models get activated for a given query. It has multiple experts within the model. Sparse MOE models activate a subset of model parameters per input token by learning to dynamically route tokens to a subset of parameters experts. This allows them to decouple total model capacity from computation and serving cost per token. Basically, you can have a massive model 
but if you're only running inference on pieces of the model, it's much more efficient. This is the same way that the DeepSeq model works and likely OpenAI series of models as well. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't say the total number of experts or how many of those experts are activated during inference time. But here is really what sets Gemini apart, the million token context window. Both Gemini 2.5 Pro and Flash can process pieces of long form text, such as the entirety of Moby Dick or Don Quixote, whole code bases and long form audio and video data. And if you wanna try the latest Gemini 2.x models from Google, take a look at the sponsor of today's video. I'm really excited to tell you about Abacus AI today. If you're like me, you probably have subscriptions to a bunch of different AI services and you jump between them all the time. And it's kind of frustrating and not only that, pretty expensive. And that is where Chat LLM by Abacus AI comes in. It is an all in one AI platform that includes all of the latest and best models from the leading model providers. And they also have something called Route LLM, which automatically picks the best model to send your prompt to dependent on the actual prompt. So it is routing your prompt to the right LLM. And of course, you can also chat with PDFs. So download any documents that you want and easily ask questions, extract insights, gather data, whatever you need from your existing documents. And not only that, they also have text to image and text to video models. So you can generate awesome images, awesome videos easily. They also recently introduced Deep Agent, which is an incredibly powerful AI agent that can basically do anything. So building websites, building apps, creating presentations, research reports, chatbots, or even building games. And all of this for just $10 per month. So check it out, chatllm.abacus.ai, or click the link in the description. Let them know I sent you, much appreciated. Thank you again to Abacus AI. Now back to the video. Now let's look at this chart. This is price to performance. On the Y axis, we have arena score. On the X axis, we have price per million tokens, assuming three to one input to output tokens ratio. And this is kind of what you want, the trend line being to the outside above and to the right of all of the other models. So you see the Claude models here. Here are some open AI models. We have the Llama models down here, unfortunately. Quen, Mistral, DeepSeek V3 coming in very strong, the DeepSeek models right there. But as we can see, Gemini 2.5 Pro tops the arena score and Gemini 2.5 flashlight preview has superior performance and relatively low cost. And another thing we learned from this paper, the smaller models in the 2.5 series of models use distillation. Basically, they take the big model and they use it to teach the smaller model. It's a distilled version of that large model. And how about the data? Well, they give a little bit of information about it. They use large scale, diverse collection of data encompassing a wide range of domains and modalities, publicly available web documents, code, including various programming languages, images, audio, including speech and other audio types, and video with a cutoff date as of June 2024 for 2.0 and January 2025 for 2.5. Now let's pause on the video data. Where do you think that's coming from? Well, they're probably licensing a lot of it, but they have this little product called YouTube in which they essentially have all the video data that any company could ever want and it is growing at an insane rate. So I wonder if they've been using YouTube video data to train their models. I'm not actually sure. If you know, or if you've seen reports somewhere, let me know in the comments below. And the Gemini models are really fast. I've said this before. Even the 2.5 Pro model seems very fast. And now getting the comparison, it's kind of confirmed. So here's DeepSeek R1. Here's the Claude models, Grok 3. And here are the O3 and O4 mini models right there. But Gemini 2.0, Flashlight 2.0 Flash and 2.5 Flash all taking the crown in terms of output tokens per second. Now, look at Gemini 2.5 Pro. Surprised to see that O3 is actually just about the same speed because it just feels like Gemini 2.5 Pro is faster. The models were trained on the TPU V5P architecture. These are the homegrown chips from Google. And they made a massive risky bet many years ago to develop their own AI chips and boy, is that paying off now. And here we can see the impact of thinking, the thinking budget or reasoning models as compared to their non-reasoning brothers. So in purple right here, 2.0 flash versus 2.0 flash with thinking. And here's 2.5 flash with dynamic thinking and 2.5 pro with dynamic thinking. And across the board, you can see 
the models get better the more thinking they do. So what did post-training look like? And if you've been watching this channel at all, you're probably not surprised to see they use reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards. They had a consistent focus on data quality across the supervised fine tuning, reward modeling, and reinforcement learning stages. A key focus has been leveraging the model itself to assist with these processes, enabling more efficient and nuanced quality control. When they say leveraging the model itself to assist, they usually mean model as a judge, one model judging the output of another model. They increase the training compute allocated to reinforcement learning, allowing deeper exploration and refinement of model behaviors, and a focus on verifiable rewards and model-based generative rewards to provide more sophisticated and scalable feedback signals. So that means verifiable rewards, rewards for solutions that can be proven like math and science and code and model-based generative rewards, model as a judge, for things that don't necessarily have a right or wrong answer like creative writing. And the reinforcement learning, as it says here, is used to elicit that thinking behavior for more accurate answers. The resulting models are able to spend tens of thousands of forward passes during a thinking stage before responding to a question or query. All right, next they gave some details about the task specific capabilities of these models. So here is code. We intensified our focus on incorporating a greater volume and diversity of code data from both repository and web sources into the training mixture. It really seems to be the more code examples you give models, the better they are overall, which is very interesting to think about. They substantially enhanced their suite of evaluation metrics for assessing code capabilities aligned with downstream use cases. They developed novel training techniques, incorporating reasoning capabilities and curated a diverse set of engineering tasks. Basically, they made the model really good at coding and we've already seen that. It's the only one that has been able to recreate a simulation of the Rubik's Cube successfully. And the key applications demonstrating these advancements include IDE functionality, code agent use cases for complex multi-step operations with full repositories and multimodal interactive scenarios such as end-to-end -end web and mobile application development. They also spent a a lot of time making sure that it was right, it was factual. Gemini 2.0 marked a significant leap as our first model family trained to natively call tools like Google search, enabling it to formulate precise queries and synthesize fresh information with sources. Then 2.5 integrates advanced reasoning, allowing it to interleave these search capabilities with internal thought processes. So I feel like this isn't talked about enough. One day I saw the ChatGPT model outputting chain of thought and then all of a sudden using tool calling within the chain of thought, which I had never seen before. They didn't really talk about it all that much. And then I saw Gemini start to do it. And now they're talking about it in this paper, but I don't think that feature gets enough love. It just seems so powerful. As the model's thinking about things, it could use tools. It's not just churning tokens but rather it's pulling in external sources. The model has learned to use search and other tools, reason about the outputs and issue additional detailed follow-up queries to expand the information available to it and to verify the factual accuracy of the response. And they talk about long context, but I've talked about it enough, million tokens, cannot be beat right now. Gemini 2.5, actually, I didn't really know this, was trained to perform audio generation tasks such as text-to-speech or native audio-visual to audio out dialogue. I didn't really fully appreciate how good it was at the audio out. I haven't tested it much, so I'll be testing it, we'll see. But one thing I do use Gemini for all the time is video understanding. I load up my videos all the time, I ask it to create chapter markers, I load up other people's videos and ask questions about them when I wanna learn about it without watching an entire video. So they spent a lot of time on this. So we have significantly expanded both our pre-training and post-training video understanding data. And the models are able to perform competitively with 66 instead of 258 visual tokens per frame, enabling about three hours of video instead of one with a million token context window. So that's nice, much more video within the same context window, more efficiency, that's good. And if you didn't see it, Gemini played Pokemon and beat the game and beat the game quite well. So as we see here on the y-axis, these are the game milestones, everything from just starting out to the Hall of Fame beating the game. And then on the x-axis, we have the time elapsed in hours. So for run one, which are these blue circles right here, it took a little longer. And then after they learned what worked, they adjusted their scaffolding, basically all of the deterministic code wrapped around the large language model to make it more effective. And this is the second run, and as you can see, really, really strong performance. 
completing the game at just over 400 hours, and the second pass is half of the time of the first pass. But it's not all perfect. What did it struggle with while playing Pokemon? Well, first, screen reading. While obtaining excellent benchmark numbers on real-world vision tasks, 2.5 Pro struggled to utilize the raw pixels of the Game Boy screen directly, though it could occasionally take cues from information on the pixels. As a result, it was necessary for the required information from the screen to be translated into text format in the agent framework, so it couldn't just read the screen, which is a bit surprising. So I grabbed a screenshot of Pokemon on Game Boy. I put it in, I said, what does the text on the screen say? And this is Gemini 2.5 and Geodude L19 HP. And it seems to be perfect. It has all of the different texts on the screen. So again, very surprised to hear that it had trouble reading that text. It also struggled with long context reasoning. Now, Gemini 2.5 Pro is really good at long context reasoning, but it says here, the agent showed a tendency toward favoring repeating actions from its vast history rather than synthesizing novel plans. This highlights an important distinction between long context for retrieval and long context for multi-step generative reasoning. So then they spend about half the paper talking about AI safety. And some of it's interesting. I'm not gonna go over much of it. I encourage you to take a look. I'll drop the link to this paper down below. They also do automated red teaming, which I thought was really cool. So we formulate ART, automated red teaming, as a multi-agent game between populations of attackers and the target Gemini model being evaluated. The goal of the attackers is to elicit responses from the target model, which satisfies some defined objectives. Basically, they are using one model to red team another model. And they also looked at memorization. So they don't want to be caught outputting full New York Times articles, for example. And they also don't want to be caught outputting people's personal information like names and social security numbers. So they tested for that. And as you can see, we have the total memorization rate here with Gemini 2.5 Flash leading the pack with a very low percentage over here, a fraction of a percent. And here is personal information in which you can see all of the recent models essentially effectively have a 0% personal information show rate. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is just a couple quick illustrations of how much better the two series of models is than the previous Gemini models. So here's a picture of just a bunch of stuff on a table. Please convert this image into SVG and try to reconstruct the spatial arrangement of the objects. Gemini 1.5, very rough. Then Gemini 2.5 Pro, much, much better. Then they also loaded up a video, a 46 minute video of a robot folding a shirt and asked it a bunch of questions. And as you can see, the 2.5 Pro Preview 5.6 was much more effective at giving specific timestamps from the video where things happened. Gemini 1.5 Pro gets the color right in a third of the cases and gets the timestamp in zero of the three cases. 2.5 Pro gets the color right in three out of three and the timestamp in one out of three. The remaining two out of three are within three seconds. Now, that's very relevant to what I do where I load up my videos and ask it to give me chapter markers. I find that most of the time, the chapter descriptions and timestamps are incredibly accurate. Occasionally, I have to adjust it by a few seconds. Occasionally, I'll rewrite one of the descriptions, but overall, it's really good. So that's it. Check them out, Gemini 2.5 Pro family of models now generally available. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.